Happy New Year and welcome to the first podcast, vlogcast, I don't know. I'm debating what it should be called. It might start be called, being called a vlogcast after having done, having done, having done vlogmas. Um, welcome. This is the Dexter Loves Annie vlogcast. My name is Kat. Dexter and Annie are dogs. Dexter's no longer with us. This is Annie. Say hello. Hello. That was a very sarcastic look there. Um, no, we don't need to bark at the door right now. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. I got a few new followers over Christmas, so thank you to you guys who uh, subscribed and welcome back to all my existing um, followers, subscribers. I said the word already, I don't know why I've forgotten it already. Uh, if I can just talk over this little monster for a bit, that'd be great. Um, yeah, so had a good Christmas, had my hair done. Uh, finally, it's at a length where I can actually turn it into a sort of a style. Uh, I had a very short pixie cut for 11, 12 years. Um, I cut it to a pixie from basically bum length, so... Uh, yeah, this is the first time I've managed to grow it out a bit. Um, I usually get it to about where it is now and uh, chop it all off because I hate it. Um, but I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying this style, quite like it. Uh, it was getting very sort of chunky here, it looked like I had spaniel's ears, it was kind of going like that. Uh, so we've taken all of that mess out. Um, let's see, let's see if we can actually bear to grow it. I haven't taken down my uh, advent yarn yet and this is a Christmas present from my sister beware I am yarned and dangerous I thought that was really appropriate for the podcast corner which is also my chair aka where I'm always sitting uh, I did get another book for Christmas I buried it hang on a minute oh no there it is I had to get all new glasses um, over Christmas because I went to the optician and everything's changed and I've also got the start of cataracts so I need to look after my eyes uh, and they were just my book was basically buried under all of the new glasses actually let's show you these first as I'm talking about them I've gone mad but I love them and I don't care really <gasps> oh dear these are my distance glasses, so I'll probably wear them in the car driving. And I can't see myself very well right now in, in the screen. But um, these little bats. I don't know if you can see them because I, I, I can't see anything because they're too close. Ah! So yeah, I'm very excited with those. I know, Yes, I am. I am mad. Are any creative people fully sane? I don't know. So... Let me show you my present. Charming Colourwork Socks by um, Charlotte Stone of Stone Knits. She's British, so I don't know why they've spelt colour wrong. Um, that's how the US spell colour. don't know. Maybe it's a, a US um, publisher. I don't know. But I found that very odd. If that was me, I'd insist on spelling it correctly. But then I'm a cheeky little tinker. Uh, so this has basically got a ton, a ton of colour work, beautiful colour work socks. I'd already paid for this one. As you know, if you've been around, um, I don't care. It's cool. I love it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that. Uh, so let's get into the work, shall we? The knitting, that's what we're here for. That's what the vlog cast uh, is, uh, is for. Uh, I did get some things finished over Christmas, but they were presents and they were gifted. Um, but, hello, sorry, Alexa would like a word. Um, I did a lot of these. 
spinnaker oh i didn't show the top bit did i that's got the actual pertinent information spinnaker beanie and it is written for four different thicknesses of wool uh so from aran weight or worsted aran worsted i think it's pretty much the same thickness wraps per inch whatever and then it goes oh yeah here we are i was looking for the page while i was waffling super bulky bulky light bulky and worsted uh so weights of yarns if anybody uses them six five five four um i did three yes i did three uh in worsted weight in Aaron, uh, one went to my uncle, one went to my brother in law who has requested a second one because he liked it so much. I do love knitworthy people. My uncle hasn't even uh, acknowledged the fact that uh, he's received it, whatever. And my husband, who absolutely loves it, and he's going out in it in this weather, and it's pretty warm already. Um, I think we're only getting down to about eight degrees cent centigrade. Um, so it is not very cold at all and he's coming back complaining that he's he's boiling idiot <laughs> but he loves it so much and he's wearing it so that's great I was hoping I was getting very smug and hoping to show you this as a completed item and then I lost at yarn chicken and had to frog it back uh, this is called the Italian scarf I'll find it. Um, I don't know why I'm doing that. So it basically goes from corner to corner, um, you know, end to end. So I think that was four stitch cast on. And then we're decreasing again. I don't I still don't know if I am going to win. Uh, sorry about that. Massive sneeze. I still don't know if I'm gonna win at Yarn Chicken this time round. I took maybe two of the long stripes out in the middle. It should be enough, I hope. I can't reach the ball, it's all the way over there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I love it. And it, the idea is that it just ties around your neck. You know, I think the centre's around about there. So it would just, obviously that would go back round. That would tie in the centre. I'm loving that. That is that yarn is um it was a dyer that was closing down. I can't find the ball band for ice again. I'm looking straight at it. One second. Oh sneezing. Sorry about that. So this was Jelly Beans Yarns. And it's a tweed, hand dyed tweed, sock yarn, superwash merino, and donegal. In the colourway golden. It's completely irrelevant because she's um, stopped dying now um, I'm going to weigh this when it's finished because I didn't weigh it beforehand and um, I knit to where I had 57 grams left thinking you know the other side is going to be equal it, it really wasn't it was very much out um, so like it matters now but just for interest to see if it was me that messed up or whether it was the yarn that was un wasn't was quite 100 grams I'm going to wear it when it's finished so yeah I'll keep plodding on at this we're on the decreases now so not going to take too long uh, you decrease by 2 every 10 rows but obviously those those 10 rows go faster the, the smaller it is so let's organise myself now um blankets let's go into blankets because they're right here and 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 i won't be sitting there going um for ages i don't know i don't know if i've shown you this since i added the extra row on this is my battenberg blanket uh oh yeah because i added this is a color that i got with the um advent that I added in I'm not going to add any more of those in because I want to make a thing don't know what yet 
but I want to make a thing. So, yeah, I added another round to the blanket. And it's it's sort of lap size now. It's good. Covers Annie up, which I will be doing now because she's, she's calmer when I cover her. <laughs> and the other blanket I was doing, this is called The Coziest Memories um, by Kemper Ray. And the blanket itself is finished, but I want to edge it. So the mitered squares, and it basically, the length of it is floor to armpit, and this goes all the way all the way around me plus a bit. Uh, it's been done in West Yorkshire Spinners. DK. Uh, the pattern calls for four ply but it really doesn't matter. This is a great one to use if you've got scraps or whatever. It was initially going to be a scrappy blanket and then I just, I loved the feel of the um, West Yorkshire Spinners wool uh, for uh, DK and um, I decided it had to be done in that. Uh, I think it's taken me a couple of years I can't remember when I cast it on um, all this information if you actually want to know the inf the, the information uh, are on my Ravelry project this is definitely on the, the uh, Battenberg blanket is definitely on my hats were on my scarf's on sometimes I forget but on the whole <laughs> that's where they are so the plan with this because where you've added on another square, let me find a bit, you get like a, a loop there because you're casting on fresh stitches and then attaching. Um, so it, it's untidy and I can't have it like that. So my plan is to do a an eye cord um, boundary edge. Uh, and I want to do it in grey. I've got lots of this um, variegated grey left, and also a whole skein of the just the plain grey. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might do a mixture of both. I don't know. I sort of thought I'd like to do uh, like maybe some stitches before the eye cord, so three or four garter stitch. Because I'll be the blanket will be there and I'll be going up the side rather than um, ca casting all those stitches on because I'm not mad and I don't think I'd have a cable that would do it. <laughs> Frankly, I'd have to make, basically join all all of my <laughs> circular cables together and no, thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking maybe three or four garter stitches before the eye cord and I'm going to do a four stitch eye cord not a three stitch eye cord so I've got to get my head around that do some YouTubing make sure I've got it in my head exactly what I'm doing and that's that's going to happen soon because it's going to get cold soon and I'm looking forward to using that on the subject of eye cords I got myself a um, there are two Instagram creators that I know of that are producing eye cord makers I went with the one that actually gives you a shipping price to the UK um, the other one says she needs to quote for it and stuff and who's got time uh, so this came Tuesday maybe and this has been made by the cranky spinster That's the link to her I Instagram if you wanted to to look her up. So this is basically she she turns the wood herself and it is really beautiful, lovely and smooth. Um, and then she's basically it's latch hooks, uh, and she's basically glued three in. Glue's a bit mucky, but 
who can control hot glue uh and she's kind of staggered them if you see so the other person that does them i think it's a 3d print and um they're in the straight line this is forcing me into holding this into my left hand because of the way it works um, and there's no way of moving these now I'm kind of omnidextrous there are certain things that I do with my right hand and there are certain things that I just can't do with my right hand and I need to do with my left hand I don't know why um, I'm special <laughs> and I would rather hold this in my right hand but it doesn't work very well really fiddly needs a lot more practice I where's the bit that I did I am getting there and I think it's going to be a fun thing to do with scraps I was kind of hoping to use this as uh, the way of getting that I cord around the edge of my coziest memories blanket I, I don't think I'm going to do it because it's fiddly I want a four uh, and to be honest they look too fine to use with DK I'm going to try it I could be wrong so essentially what I'm saying is it's brilliant I would probably go for the other one if I had my time again I might even go for the other one and, and maybe sell that on to somebody who's who's left-handed right I don't know I don't know because I am typically right-handed but I don't know, I can't work it out. Anyway. So, we've waffled for 16 minutes and not got very far. <laughs> Let's get back to the projects. So, I'm just getting my bean and olive out. This is how far this has got. Oh, it's a bit of fluff in there. Where did that come from, Annie? I have a little bin next to my chair now. I've got it on Timo, but it's very handy when you find bits of fluff and you don't want to just drop them because they'll go back onto something else. Right, there we are. I think I need to do about another four inches on here. And I've been putting some progress markers on because it does not knit up very quickly. And the yarn, I think it's slightly thicker than DK. Where are my progress markers? Oh, there they are. <laughs> Tucked in the roll, the, the, the fabric's rolling up. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm getting done in one day. If I really work hard at it and not have too many interruptions. That was another day. So yeah, it's a, it's a reasonably long term project. And I think it's been going a year already. This is hand spun Shetland wool. Uh, got it from Wool Warehouse. And um, the blue colourway is called Kingfisher. I can't remember what the, the golden one is. Um, but it was all hand spun. And uh, yeah, it's, it's hard on my hands because, I mean, I got the gauge right. But I think. The yarn is potentially just just a smidge thicker than what a DK typically would be, and it's. Uh, I did a woolen prep, so it should be kind of bouncier, but it, it's not. I row lagged it, uh, which for people who don't spin, basically there's two different types of prep for yarn. One where the fibres all lay flat together, and that is called a worsted prep. And that makes for a nice solid yarn for like good stitch definition and um, more strength like for socks. If you jumble up the um, the fibres, then that is a woolen prep, and it's just basically more fluffy because there's more air in between the fibres, and the fibres are, are mashed. I'm just going to get this back in my project bag because it's a real fight. Okay, next. These are very exciting. 
I'm doing them two at a, two at a time and if you've done two at a time you know that when you put them back in the project bag it gets really <laughs> really jumbled these are my Christmassy socks I've done the cuff in uh, a drops fable pink because I didn't want the the rib done in the sparkle and this yarn I bought and if you saw my vlogmas you'll see bought it after I decided I wasn't buying any more yarn uh, Bird Street yarn is the dyer and it's called Christmas at Barbies it's a four ply sparkle, 70% uh, superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. I was going to make these shorties so that I can get two pairs out of this. Um, but actually, I think I'm going to I'm going to carry on. I was going to stop at 20 rows the ankle but I'm gonna maybe do 40 and then see what's left I will do a contrasting toe I don't like to do a contrasting heel and actually I don't love the texture of this with that this is lovely and soft that's not so uh, yeah I'm gonna do the heel in the sparkle and be damned <laughs> now then I haven't shown this for a while my shame Sorry if you get too sick. The basket holding this is holding, also holding the um, the camera down. But my, my Christmas scene socks, I love them so much. I wish I'd finished them. But, yeah, what am I like? So, there's Santa in his sleigh. Here comes a... I was going to say snowdrop, snowflake, and then the reindeer continue round. The pattern is written by Kelly Menzies and it is in a magazine. Let's knit? No, not let's knit. Knit now, maybe. I can't remember. I'll, I'll put it up. You know what I'm like. I'll put, I'll like, if it's not on the screen around here somewhere, I usually put it here. Um... I will put it down below. I'm going to get that finished. I don't think they fit. Even though that looks pretty massive, there's no give because it's colour work and I'm not that versed in colour work socks yet. Um, and yeah, there's not as much give to get them on. So it might just become a stocking. And I've done terrible things at the edges where I've... Oh, I hope that all blocks out. I'm not showing you. You're not seeing it. I'm not showing you my... Oh, go on then. No, you won't be able to discern it from the... You see where I've done done a wrap on the edge? You should never do a catch on the edge. And I've done it a few times and it shows... So when you catch your floats, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, well. Yeah, I think my stitch marker says it all, really. <laughs> but it's all good practice, and it will get used. If it don't go on my foot, it will go on my banister. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about upcoming things. I have got, I've decided on a few projects for next year. I've decided that uh, I want to get back into teaching. My mum was a teacher. Um, she passed five years ago. She absolutely loved teaching. And when she passed, I sort of made a, a resolution that... I would want to pass on my skills like she, I mean she, she taught primary school but um, and that's when we set up my friend and I we set up a knit and natter group which we called stitch bitch and bark because it's at the pet shop it was at the pet shop after hours um, and I taught a lot of people to crochet and um, 
somebody came for knitting lessons and then COVID hit and we didn't continue with it because life got in the way, the shop got busier, the corner where we were knitting actually just got used for more stock. So now that I have this forum, that's where this is where I'm going to do it. So I'm going to be doing a lot more sort of tutorials and how to's. And the first one that I'm going to be doing, and it's not a major one, but it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I know that I've got people waiting for it. But do you remember that I made this here socks? <gasps> um, I had to, I, I kept lengthening them because they just wouldn't stay up. And my theory was that if I got them to sort of the thigh area, they would stay up. Well, they don't. So I researched and I saw somebody basically uh, crocheting some shearing elastic into the inside of the rib. I have done one sock. I'm happy to report that it does help. So I'm going to do a tutorial for that to show you how I did that. And I'm going to do that soon because I want to start wearing these again. Um, because it's getting cold and I like them. I do really, really love these socks. Um, and then I've also invested in some knit in elastic that uh, I'm going to trial as well. So it, that will be a two video series unless I can find any other methods of keeping your socks up. So that's coming. Um, I have a load of fibre that I want to um, card up into bats I bought some specific colorways that I can do so that's going to be another one um, I've got a drum carder and I've got a standy uppy carder thing brain going um, also and um, I'm not taking credit for this because I didn't think of this but I'm running with it because I'm sure I'm not the only one on this uh, but there's quite a few sock projects that I've bought and never done and there are some sock projects, sock patterns that I've bought um, and did and had to frog mainly because I bought the wrong yarn for it, it just didn't work and it's all good, it's all trial and error, you know, working out what, what, what works with what um, so I have printed a load I've selected a load there are still some that I'm not doing mainly because of pattern details like ridges and stuff I cannot wear socks with ridges in um, uh, and there are a couple from a designer that um, I won't use anymore so uh, yeah they'll stay where they are uh, so I have printed in A5 to save on paper and save on space and at the top I'm a sheep socks. Now, I did attempt these. I did it badly. <laughs> they ended up as gloves. Um, and I'm really looking forward to doing these again. And I've caked up the yarn for these. I don't know where it is. But I'll show you. I'll do all these and stuff. I might even start doing little shorts. So you don't have to listen to me waffle for half an hour about nothing. I hope you're still here, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'll be taking a register. Uh, so I'm going to be doing my cat and sheep socks. Uh, then Rhinebeck Roomies by Kay Litton. I don't pattern details now. I did do these. I did one sock. I did it A in Malabrigo yarn, which doesn't have any um, acrylic in, so I was never going to wear them. And also, it didn't work with the yarn that I bought, so that got frogged. Mermaid tail socks again. I only made one of these wrong yarn frogged and that is by Yarnia Designs then I did make these and they were fine except they were too big for me and they're toe up and I really need to get a handle on how long the foot needs to be before I start excuse me the fibres are getting to me um, how long the sock needs the foot needs to be before I start the heel and I've not quite I've not quite done that yet, so um Kelly, you'll be helping me. 
but I'm going to be redoing a pair of these. I gave away the pair of these that I made to somebody who's been really horrible to me. So <laughs> I'm really regretting that. Never mind. So the next one is also a Kelly pattern. I haven't done these. I wanted to do them, but didn't. Now I haven't printed the rest of this ah, in A5 because there's a lot of pages and I've already printed it. So that's just kind of a, a reminder for that one. This next one's coming out because it's got a ridge. Let's see if I, it's got a ridge. I won't wear that. Uh, so that's coming out. I didn't realise it had the ridge until... Oh. That's a knit it flat. And sew it up. That's why it's got a ridge. Mm, no, thank you. <laughs> Maybe there's a better way of sewing that. I don't know. Anyway. Yarnia Designs again. A Kern Socks. Never made those. Going to be doing those. Then, the pattern that I won from uh, Yarning for a Smile, and this was the pattern I decided on, Teasel Socks by Jane Burns, and they look awesome. And I know Jane is a cuff down, cuff down girl, so I'm comfortable with these. Not that I'm not comfortable with toe up, I quite like doing the cast on. So... That is my project for this year, and I think, I'm sure I bought the yarn out to show you. Is that it? No. I'll do shorts and stuff. I don't know where the hell that's gone. Uh, found it, a naughty little doggy. I pulled it down and used it as her bed. So I've got my Ziploc bag full of yarns ready to go I have Hobie Unicorn I have one of my favourite yarns Huntingdon Valley Yarns that will probably be the I reckon that will be Teasel that will be the Vial of Sands assuming I've got enough also got a, a skein from that um, Jelly Beans yarns. It's similar colour, um, apart from the, I don't know what all that was, but yeah, similar colour, but no uh, Tweedy bits. And then got another Hunt Huntington Valley in blue. I actually don't like that colour particularly, um, but I think it's a good yarn. It's soft, it feels nice, so I can give the colour. And then for my um, sheepy, yarn, sheepy socks, this is going to be the sheep. It's a boucle that I got from Tribe Yarns. And this is an old uh, advent from Yarn Whisper. It's called Tannenbaum. Don't know if he still dyes that colourway, but... Uh, I thought a nice sort of variegated green would be nice and that again wasn't my idea I saw that online so I am slowly going through my stash and finding some yarns that will suit these I got some from Jess at Skein and Stitch before Christmas she had a bit of sale so I'm going to throw those in Ziplocs gosh why are they so <laughs> tricky for me today um, and I am calling that project no sock left behind because I can that's my project there are other projects in the pipeline mainly to satisfy some stash busting that needs to happen because my stash is getting embarrassing now the hat that my brother-in-law wanted that's the colour he wants he's a fisherman and he wants it without a bobble hat so he can pull his hood over the top um, when I do my next pair of DK knit socks which is what those purple ones are that I'm trying to experiment on how to keep them up 
I bought three different colourways from Hobie. This is a uh, discontinued line, but you've got to hope that discontinuing means they think they've got a better blend of fibres and there's another one coming out. So this is a rainbow four ply, not four ply, DK sock. And I've got three of those so I can do some nice long socks with them and I also every year I miss out on the good uh, Halloween colourways and I managed to get this one absolutely love pink, uh, purple and green together absolutely love it and um, I think that's just going to be a, a vanilla sock when, when I finish my sparkly ones but they are in the pipeline they are my next cast ons uh, so I think the order of work is going to be to finish that uh, golden scarf and then start on the border for the blanket and my Christmas socks, <laughs> get the Christmas socks finished. So that's that's where I'm at for projects. Uh, pause for coffee break. <laughs> um, I've also, I do have some more yarn coming from Tribe Yarns because I bought some yarn from Fibre Fox. Brain, come on. Um, then I want to make another ranunculus top with. So what I'm wearing now is the Love Note with no lace in it whatsoever and a, an I-cord cast off. Um, and between this one and Ranunculus, I've got the perfect tops <laughs> sorted out. Um, so yeah, I got some. I got two skeins, which is absolutely perfectly enough. Uh, and I want to make a slightly thicker Ranunculus because I've done two pretty thin ones that are good for sort of spring and autumn. So I'm um, waiting for that. I think she's still on holiday in India, so nothing's getting dispatched right now. My printer was running out of ink, so you're going to have to excuse the very bad printing here. But there are two more things that I want to do. Actually, I think I might put just put this up on the screen because this did not print very well. But I saw this. I think this is quite old. Uh, 2014, I think that says. I can't even read it. I'm going to have to reprint this top page. Um, but it's a lovely geometric scarf where I can use some scraps or minis. I've got some um, UV resist UV um, minis, bright, vibrant ones. Some from someone and some that I dyed up myself. So that would be quite a fun one to do. And then I've been saying for a very long time that I want to do a dicky which is basically a, um, a neckline and a front and a back panel. Just to tuck inside your coat for extra warmth, because I hate being cold. Um, and I tried to print this, and uh, you can't really see it, but uh, let's cover up the pattern. It's a free pattern, but I think it's a way of farming your emails, so I can't give it away. But it's basically just a panel there. And, uh, yeah, controversial crafter Tom Daly there. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm going to do that until my hands spun. So, look forward to all of that and loads more coming this year. Over Christmas, I released two Aran weight patterns. Aran worsted. It's about the same thickness. It, it, one of my tester, testers used worsted weight and they came out absolutely fine so um they do fine for worsted or aran two sock patterns one for some for some shortened like house booties and a pair of cable socks and um, they're available on my ravelry if you'd like to have a look at them they're available now and um i think that's it for now so we'll end that there Thank you very much for sticking to, through to the end if you're still here. I uh, look forward to seeing you on my next video, whether it's a tutorial or a vlogcast.
That doesn't roll off the tongue, does it? Let's just stick to podcasts, sod it. <laughs> Hope you have a lovely fortnight. Lots of love. Uh, see you soon. Bye.